We're not a Zumba class. And I, I, tell, I tell my students all the time, if that's what you want, go, go and take Zumba because that's not what we're, we're about. We're a, we're, we teach you life through hula. Um, and life as we know it, life as our ancestors knew it, that's what we're teaching. We're not just teaching dance. Um, for us, hula is not just a hobby. It's not just for exercise. Yes, it does promote all of those things. Yes, we do all of those things um, and work on all of those physical, um, physical health aspects, but that's not the major part of what many of our halal do. Okay, welcome back to Hawaii Real, everybody. If you haven't yet subscribed, click on the su subscribe link below. Help uh, this channel grow and help me bring on more guests. Today, I have with me Kumu Keanu Kaupu. Aloha. Hey, thank you so much for coming on, man. Well, thank you for having me, Iwani. Oh, look at that. You got the, my name right. <laughs> Yes, I am EOK, who I've, we were just talking about this off camera, how I, I never introduced myself uh, uh, during the podcast and everything, because I kind of want to make it for the guests. Like, it's it's the guests. Yeah, thing. but you remember what I told you? It's like you're the artist, yeah. and you're painting us into your art, and yeah. so 90% of uh, the art is recognized because of the beauty of the art, but... The real, the real work goes in the background, and that's you, the artist. So, yeah, that's me, huh? Io Kehu. <laughs> oh, Iwane Kehu. Funny thing about my name, it's not actually Hawaiian. Oh yeah. Everybody thinks it's like everybody in Hawaii is. Oh, it's Hawaiian, right? It's not. It's Greek. Ah. So Iwane, I don't care if you're from Hawaii or Tonga or Samoa. Like Iwane is kind of a common name. It's Greek. Yeah. The missionaries brought it over. Because it means the same thing in Greek. It's John the Baptist. Uh, in Polynesia, it's John the Baptist. And in Greece, it's John the Baptist. The only difference is in Greece, they sometimes put an S at the end. So it's Ioannis uh, uh, or Ioannis. That's very interesting. That is but really interesting. I blow your that. mind here. In Italian, it's Giovanni. So John you, is Giovanni. Yes. Ah, so okay, okay. Io, okay. Ioanne, Giovanni, same thing, different languages. Ooh. Yanni, you know, the flute player yeah. dude. Yeah, same thing. Same, same name. John. Same name. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's all connected. See, I learned something. I learned something here yeah. <laughs> on your podcast. All right. <laughs> all right. So one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on is because um, your halal and COVID and all the lockdowns. And we're always talking about how um, the lockdowns and the shutdowns have affected businesses and restaurants and schools and stuff like that. But we haven't. Nobody's really touched on like what's going on with the halals um, and how it's affecting that. Cause you guys have competitions, tournaments and, you know, training and just teachings and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. I think like, like all businesses in Hawaii or around the world, you know, we're taking a big hit um, in many aspects and not just financially, but culturally um, how we teach uh, our craft to our students, that has been affected. Uh, we can no longer teach physically, face to face. So we utilize vir virtual platforms like Zoom, um, Google Classroom. At least for us, Hello um, Hi'i Akei Namakale Hua, we, yeah, we, we kind of dove in almost immediately into those virtual platforms because the connections, we couldn't lose the connections with our students. Once we do that, their connection to hula is lost. So it, it, it's just the whole, you know, uh, it could fail systematically, you know, in, in, in not just with the business, but with, in our culture. And so we decided we needed to jump on it immediately. Um, Everyone, I think, is taking a huge hit in the hula community. Uh, we talked to different kumu hulas, uh, different hula students from other halal. Um, and, you know, just to see, even in, in conversations passing by, uh, just to see how everybody's doing. And everybody's struggling. Uh, we, we just... <laughs> 
it, it was it, it, at the worst time possible to go on uh, quarantine in back in April. That was during the whole Mary Monarch oh my uh, God, season, right, right. like right before it. So everybody's kind of hyped up, getting ready, and everything shuts down. And it literally felt, for us at least, it literally, we felt like zombies. We felt like there's all this adrenaline, all this work, all this money, all this time, commitment, sacrifice, that not just the Kumu, but the students, the Haumana you know, poured into um, their halal, into their kumu, into a performance. Um, and then all of a sudden, gone. It's all gone. It just shut down. And you were, we felt kind of like ghosts. We didn't know there was, we didn't know for a few weeks. In fact, I know for me, I felt like a ghost, not knowing where to go, what to do, because everything was focused so focused much like our economy so focused on one thing that when it shut down it was hard to pick up the pieces um and 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 you see that in our economy now when when things are shut down it's hard to pick up the pieces when we can't rely on or focus on that one uh, aspect of our economy so in, in, in Mary Monarch's case, that was many of our halal's focus, or at least the competing halal's focus, as well as the, the, um, the audience, you know, who planned, spent a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of preparation to just get there and be a spectator. Unfortunately, that couldn't happen and to no fault of anyone, um, but it was it left a lot of people like ghosts and we walked around like zombies for a while um, because our emotions were in invested and you just, this pandemic just took that emotions out and uh, immediately. And so we had to, you know, take some time. And I think I took a, a week or maybe a week and a half and then jump right back in because like I said, if we didn't do that, connections to Hula would be lost. And that's detrimental. Because um, Mary Monarch is like the Super Bowl for Hula. Right, right. Uh, I and mean, so like an analogy is imagine like football players going through their whole lives playing football to get to the professional level and then go through like season after season after season trying to get to the Super Bowl and they finally get there and then they're told that you can't play anymore. Yeah. We're not doing the Super Bowl this year. Right before. Right before. Yeah. Right before. Um, and, and, and so it was devastating for the Hula community. Uh, unfortunately for Mary Monarch and the, the directors, Auntie Luana, um, they didn't have any time to really rectify anything or plan anything to supplement the loss you know and so they tried their best and I, I hats off to to auntie luana and her committee because they really tried their best not just to save the face of mary monarch but to really um really feel for the hello and 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 their audiences um i i felt i felt worst for them I felt worse for them because they were put into a very, very, um, not worse than uncomfortable state, but just no place, there was no place that you could go. And, you know, I think they did the best job they could. I think all the halals did a great job at coming back from, from that one loss. Mm -hmm. Once we got our bearings, it was okay. How do we keep it? How do we keep our um, our bubble safe? How do we keep our mm -hmm. halal safe? Our families, um, because that became we we had to get back into reality, and that became important. The most important thing was the safety of our students and ourselves and our families. Without us, this cultural practice cannot continue. So that was the next important thing, um, which 
I kind of will segue into this, which kind of opened up a lot of Kumuhula's mind, not everyone, but a lot, um, to, okay, how can we help ourselves and our communities? Because that's our kuleana, that's our responsibility, that's our privilege as Kumuhula is to help not just ourselves, but our community. And that kind of led in, in very different ways, um, very different um not just with hula but cultural practices in doing positive things um to fight this covid uh pandemic and how how are we gonna how are we gonna do that and so we took it back to our cultural practice and many of us went on kapu or restriction um and part of the restriction was guidelines from cdc um but we also included you know, practical and sig significant, metaphoric, um, cultural practices so that we stay healthy. We do all the things that we need to do, um, both in society nowadays, as well as going uh, applying our cultural practices as hula dancers. And then inviting the community, because again, that's, that's our goal as well is to bring in the community into that and offering them hey this is what we're doing as hula people um if you if you're down great like what are the, what are the kind of things you're doing so uh for for us we're involved in uh myself lono who is the other kumuhula of halau hi'iakai namakalehua our halau as well as other kumuhula we're involved in kind of a movement called Lahui Kanaka or um, this kapu or restriction for mauliola or optimal health. And so along with, you know, wearing your mask, social distancing, um, all these guidelines that our government is um, placing on us, we also watch what we eat, um, particular things that we eat um, and consume. Uh, we call that aipono and making sure that what we eat is pono or uh, good for us. Um, again, practically and metaphorically um, and symbolically. So, you know, really looking at our akua um, at our environment, our natural environment, and what can we uh, take in and consume to for better optimal health? Um, what can we restrict ourselves from, like anti-inflammatory stuff, um, and what increases anti-inflammatory, um, you know, produce in your body. Right. So would you say that the pandemic has made um, hula halau people more attuned to their own personal health and safety that they weren't doing before? Like, it's not just the masks and the social distancing to not get sick, but it's also, are, are, like, were they not doing that before with the whole dietary restrictions and stuff like that, where they're oh. living a healthy lifestyle? and maintaining like good healthy weight and you know level of fit fitness and stuff like that absolutely and i'll be the first to attest i i was one of them uh, i you know and we it's it's the steps that we need to take to better ourselves um the first two three three months you know i i gained 20 pounds and uh, of this pandemic i gained 20 pounds all we did was stay home and now I had to learn how to cook. And now that I'm learning how to cook, I want to cook a lot. And I have food for, you know, 20 people, but there was only two people in the house. <laughs> and now I got to eat them all. Um, and I don't mind eating, you know, and it, it, it didn't matter. I, I was just, you, you know, when you're in that kind of frame of mind of desperation, mm -hmm. you, you desperation eat. Stress eating too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you consume and you forget about conserving. Um, and I think that's what we immediately did. And it, it, it not only 
um, made us aware of those things and how unhealthy we can be. But the great thing that this pandemic did was made us aware of what we can do um, as a cultural practice to better ourselves. Because how, what people don't realize is the Hawaiian way of living pre-contact. And I'm going to always say pre-contact mm -hmm. because that's the only way you can think of true Hawaiian living um, uh, with very minimal influences. They were healthy people because they lived off of the land and, and the sea and everything was a well-balanced um, lifestyle. Their relationships and how their um, society was built, or I shouldn't even say there, how our society was built, um, was to maintain an optimal living, an optimal life, um, optimal relationships. And again, even with their gods, and that's how they did that, was their relationships with their akua um, and their natural environment. And so getting back to that and being able to teach our students that and really focusing on it um, was awesome, was awesome. When we were in physical class, we would touch up, touch up upon um, Ike or knowledge. This, we were able to really focus in on the non-physical, intellectual, mental, spiritual, emotional, parts and and the participants kumu and dancers really had to engage themselves and, and you know participate and not just physically but now mentally spiritually emotionally if they haven't yeah it's really interesting how the the pandemic and the shutdown and not allowing people to go to like the beaches and the parks and the gyms and stuff has actually stirred people up to work out and eat right and be healthy, not just, um, not just for a healthy lifestyle, but also to like not get COVID or if they do happen to get COVID that they are in a healthy place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that they can recover from it fast. I think that's, that's one of the silver linings around the whole pandemic is that, you know, there's a lot more people having Being healthy, he yeah, healthier lifestyle because yeah. they know that, Hey, the chances of, you know, me getting COVID is kind of high. But the chances of me recovering are from it are kind of high too. So I want to be on that end. Yeah, much better than I was six months ago. Right. And yeah. if I'm eating McDonald's French fries every day, it's not that's not going to help me. Right? Yeah. Oh, McDonald's French fries. I Is that part of you guys' that. diet? Uh, I wish it was now. See, I'm always like, <laughs> wait, French fries, potatoes, potatoes grow out of the ground, organic, <laughs> salad. Right. right. Big Macs have lettuce and... <laughs> Oh yeah, well, I, I'm 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 the same I'm the same way. The only thing with this, you know, when we go on cup with those excuses, cannot happen anymore. Yeah, you know, and 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 so we're not only committed to ourselves, but we're committed to a group of people, the collective that has committed to these restrictions. So it makes us accountable. Yeah, and. Um, I think it, it's good support when, when people can go through things together um, for the same kind of cause, for the same benefits, um, you gain support. Yeah, um, And I think this world needs that, not just our hula world, but the world in general needs to know that we have support somewhere. Yeah, and to find that, that's what we're trying to find, I think, now every every individual every collective finding who the, those supportive people are that align with what we want mm -hmm. yeah. so have you found because you were talking about earlier about doing things on zoom just like a lot of businesses and a lot of um entertainment bit entertainment things have done um have you guys found that you're doing or having more participation or new participation for people that would never have done um, hula before because you guys are doing things on zoom or using technology now? I, you know, that's a great question. I think, um, there's a few ways to look at it for our people that were in our halal already. Um, it basically weeded out the people that I think would have been weeded out later and much more quick. Um, 
we want people who want to learn hula and be passionate about hula um, and our culture and Hawaii. And it kind of helped weed those people out when you take out the physical interaction. Yeah. And when you introduce to them that it's not just physical, hula is not just dancing. Um, it's learning about your culture or our culture. It's learning about the practices. It's actually practicing without being together. It's not just being social that's important. Um, sometimes we actually have to internalize things. And people who don't feel like that's important, then walk out the door and, and we're like, okay, then that's fine. Um, that's one way to look at the people that we already have in Halau. So people stepped up to the plate. People exceeded their what we expected of them. And then people faltered. And so what it did was it, it helped us realize, okay, for our purpose, who really is here genuinely to align with that? Um, and then we have people that from the outside looking in, I think a lot of people want to take advantage of the, the online uh, platforms and the virtual platforms. The hesitation on that from our perspective is that that's all they want. They just want the online and virtual experience. But when it comes time to come together, just the opposite of what I was talking about earlier, when it's time to come together, oh, they, they can't make that commitment. Um, that's a problem because we need that physical personal connection as well. And that's what for us in Hula, we're, we're longing for at this, at this time is that physical connection with our students, with each other, um, our students with each other. Uh, and so all of that is needed. We can't just live, we can't just teach and, and live in a Hula world that is only virtual. There's no relationship there, you know, um, uh, aside from the business part, just the, the human part, that interaction is important. And we lose true depth in relationships. And I think um, that's in the hula, the hula realm. I'm also seeing it happen in our personal relationships. And, uh, and how that, that, that connects is hula is a personal relationship with the individuals and and the collective um it is our okay so my students relationship to hula is me i'm their connection to hula and the kumu is their connection to hula and so if they lose that connection with me they don't have that connection to hula and they can find it someplace else but they still need the kumu and so even in the physical connection not just how I can make them a better dancer and mold them physically into a better dancer. It's easier uh, than virtual uh, platforms, but the connection, the relationship, that physical relationship is necessary. And so I'm, I'm finding that I'm learning more about people, those close to me, as well as those who um, want in on my universe. And some people I think is very genuine in, in their, desire to learn and not just on virtual uh, platforms and others, you know, we, we have, we have people from Spain, from not only Japan and Mexico, but like from Spain and from the Netherlands that are contacting us to, to, um, enroll in our classes now that they know that we're doing virtual platform classes. And I have to tell them, if your plan is not to be here, you know, in the next six months to a year, um, I, I, my, right. so it's not just a, you're, you're not just a hula class yeah. and that's what they're looking for. They're just yes. looking to learn 
how to do the moves and stuff like that. But you guys are more, like you were saying earlier, a collective. You're yeah. going to come together. You're going to dance together and work together. It's a cultural practice. And mm. that's what we're, we're not just giving them um, lessons. We're not a Zumba class. And I, right. I, tell, I tell my students all the time, if that's what you want, go, go and take Zumba. Because that's not what we're, we're about. We're a, we're, we teach you life through mm. hula. Um, and life as we know it, life as our ancestors knew it, that's what we're teaching. We're not just teaching dance. Um, so it's kind of a little offensive when they stuck us in with gyms, you know? Oh my <laughs> when... God, right. So they, <laughs> they should stick you more with like churches more than gyms necessarily. I, I, I would say more with the educational system because we do like um, the educational system. Um, yes, we teach, uh, knowledge, uh, book knowledge, but we also teach life skills, you know, and it's in, the only thing about religion, uh, that where they stick us in with religion is it, it's, it, mm, not all hula halau subscribe to the Hawaiian cultural quote unquote religion, sure. even though they practice hula mm -hmm. they don't necessarily subscribe to the hawaiian beliefs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for lack of better term um fully you know and it, and for me that's i don't have any kind of opinion against anybody that does i think that they're still kumuhula and halau are still doing wonderful things for our culture whether they believe um, about our akua or not, or believe in other um, higher beings. Uh, so I think that's a little touchy, that you're not going to have all kumuhula and all halaus to agree that we're a part of a religion. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think a part of the educational system is kind of good because we do think we do teach the same kinds of things that people teach from kindergarten all the way up to college, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and like I said, life systems, um, at home. Um, so yeah, I, it's, it's kind of, I, I get why they stuck us in with gyms, um, and even dance classes. Um, because of how and where we practice um, our culture. But I think from a cultural perspective, it, it's, it's really hard to stomach that we're not, not saying anything bad or dumbing down the importance of physical fitness and gyms, but that's not all we do. We don't just do physical fitness. Um, for us, hula is not just a hobby. It's not just for exercise. Yes, it does promote all of those things. Yes, we do all of those things um, and work on all of those physical, um, physical health aspects, but that's not the major part of what many of our halal do. It's building a cultural lifestyle. Yeah. And now more with like health and wellness also built into that. Yeah, cultural understanding, especially, um, and, and and that's the thing is, what people think starts out as physical as who, but people when people think hula is physical, they fail to realize that that's that's the bottom of the barrel, the physical part is the bottom of the barrel. There's intellectual, um, mental, emotional, spiritual um, aspects that in halal structure. Uh, that's how you, you raise up in that halal structure, um, as opposed to physical being the highest, um, place to reach where for us in our halal, at least spiritual is the, the higher and hardest thing to reach in a, in a, in a dancer. So I like to throw this question to some of my guests. What are you dissatisfied about in Hawaii? Ooh. And what would you like to see improve? Um, for sure. 
the government system. Um, we're, we're seeing that uh, a lot. I don't really like to talk about politics because I was never a fan of politics. I was never a fan of, um, the only thing I was a fan of was voting, but never really kept up on politics until the last four to maybe six years. Um, and just because our world has changed. So government, I think, um, I'd like to see a change. I don't know exactly what. So, you know, when you don't have a, um, a plan, sometimes I feel like, eh, maybe I shouldn't really speak on that just because I don't have anything to contribute to make it better. But I do know, I, I can recognize that things need to be, need to get better in our government. Um, economics uh i think we that we rely too much on um the visitor and the visitor industry as well as military um and i am speaking from a cultural perspective um not being an authority of it or anything but i think that this pandemic has really shown us our bones and what what do you really have when all of it is taken away um so i think diversifying and really focusing on local um and this that's a good suggestion for every place focus on your own and your own um your own universe um i think our society is so, we live off of convenience yeah. and, and making money fast and making big money fast. And, you know, when all is gone, what do we have? And, and like I said, we, we got to then go back to the basics. And again, we can talk about economics and government till the cows come home and nobody's going to ever have the right answers. Um, so we can just have faith in what we do have. Our outlook on things I think is very important. Um, but those two things, I think at this time I dislike most about Hawaii. Um, and, and funny thing is those, those two things are not, um, they're adopted and, and adapted in Hawaii. Oh, they were kind of pushed on Hawaii. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, it's not what Hawaii was. Right. Or, or, or not even the, the whole mindset did not include those kinds of things, those kinds of procedures. Um, and, and so that's kind of ironic. They were now dependent on two things that weren't necessarily homegrown. So, so how are we going to sustain ourselves? Right. How, how are we going to be self-sustainable when that's foreign to, to the Hawaiian mindset and the Hawaiian worldview um, and the Hawaiian environment? You know, we have all this, we got so stuck on aesthetic beauty of Hawaii. What about our, what about substance? What about our resources? You know, what about those things that when we damage them, they're gone for life. They're gone forever. Um, so, oh, that's, that is a very hard question. Um, but I'm glad you asked that because I think uh, more people need to start thinking about that question. What do we dislike about Hawaii? Plenty of things we like about it, but what do we dislike about it? And only when we start thinking about that question, can we start thinking about a solution? So, Kumu, um... What, and I, I, I know you probably implement this onto your, your students and stuff, but what is your philosophy on life? Not just in Hula, but outside of Hula all around you. And it may have changed throughout the years, but yeah. What is your philosophy on life and living? And, and I think you're correct. I think that it's changed and it's going to continue to change, um, you know, with the experiences and the lessons that we learn, um, I, I, I think that's it. I, I think that for me, that's it. Live your life and um, learn how to adapt. 
live your life and learn how to adapt and be happy. Um, be happy doing it. Yeah. Um, okay, how do I, how do I? It's like adaptability is huge yeah. because life, as we've seen in the past year, has not been, you know, something reliable. But the <laughs> funny thing about that, though, but the funny thing about that, what we've seen this past year happened in our lives so many times in very different intensities and very different levels. Um, we've had so many pandemics in our lives that made us change, that made us have to rethink, analyze who we are, what we are, uh, what are we doing, um, and adapt. And then, you know, you know, so this is something huge on a greater scale because it affected a lot more people than just little old me. But you know how many pandemics we've had? Emotionally, physically, psychologically, throughout our lives. So I think that philosophy in thinking that um, accept that things will change and we need to learn how to adapt to them so that we are happy and we are still genuine and we have and we live with integrity. I think that's that's happiness. Um, genuineness and integrity is three things that you know to live a, a good optimal happy life you need those things and then you need to learn how to adapt to the changes in your life um what was a new what was a norm eight months ago is no longer normal now that's not we need to definitely learn how to change and adapt um that's how the world that's how the world goes around, you know, that's, that's our world. It's not new. Um, this disease, COVID-19 is new, but, but diseases and pandemics aren't new. Yeah. Yeah. But so many new things that have come into your life prior to this, that has made you need to change has made you need to improve progress. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm going to stick to my answer and I'm going to say, um, um, you know, recognizing that change happens, learning how to adapt to it, um, keeping in mind happiness, integrity, and genuineness. So I'm going to blow your mind with this one and all my listeners out there, listen to this. Cause I just, I just popped into my mind a few days ago and it, it made me really think about what's going on in the world today um, with the shutdowns and everything all over. We could not have had the shutdown and the distance learning and all of this without the internet. Had we not had the internet, none of this would have gone on. Like we would not, you can't stay home for more than two weeks if all you had was your television and nobody's working and nobody's, you know, you have your television and your radio, right? So without the internet, there's no distance learning. That's not happening. Yeah. There's no work from home. That's not happening. Like the internet is the, is a segue to allow for our entire society to let the government shut us down. Yep. I absolutely agree. Um, however, however, I also think that not may not be a bad thing, right? Because I, I think we deal with so many things in our society. One of the things that is so unnecessary for us to deal with is fake news. And part of this huge blow up of and, and untrustworthiness of this pandemic is fake news. What is what is true and what is not? Um, again, knowing when to accept opinion and distinguishing opinion from fact. Right now, we take everybody's opinion as fact. As long as they say this happened rather than I heard this happen. Um, we take it for fact, you know, until somebody else tells us, no, nope, that's wrong. This happened. And then somebody else, no, nope, that's wrong. This happened. And then you don't know what to believe actually is going on. That's what's happening right now with this pandemic. Um, and so many people are refuting um, information. So I think, yes, it helped us looking at it 
we think that it's a savior. The internet is the savior because it's saving us from this pandemic. We can um, use virtual platforms. But I also think it's the culprit because we wouldn't be in a lot of situations that we were, we are in and were in if it wasn't for technology and the convenience of information and data. So I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> <laughs> Have you watched The Social Dilemma? No. Oh. Oh, the one on the Netflix. Netflix. I was going to watch that. Watch it. It's it, it blew my mind. They're talking about how Facebook and some of these other platforms um, push users to actually give information. Yeah, give information, but not only that, but like stuff that comes on your feed is meant to make you angry and fearful. And not just that, it, it's meant for you for a certain reason. Yeah. It's not just for to to push you to be angry or dislike, but if it shows if you if you you show interest in it and the length of time you show interest in it it's basically they manipulate their users you know and i think that as a society we've been manipulated all around and not just from facebook or from social media but all around and we allowed it as i'm watching it and they're they're bringing up these points and i'm like i felt i feel that that survey out and didn't think anything of it. But now these people are, there's a few, there's a few, after watching that, we, we watched a few other um, documentaries. And, and, you know, call me naive, but I did not even think that these things happened. In 2020, I did not even think, but it makes sense. How do they, how do you, how do they know that I was just looking at that particular website or looking at that pants or that shirt? And then now I'm getting bombarded by these ads that suggest that pants or that type of, um, product. Uh, well, no, the big one was like, people were talking to like their friend about a product. And the next thing they know, they've never searched it on their phone or their digital device, but next thing they know, they're getting ads for that device or for that product that they were just talking to someone about. Right. And the, the privacy um, aspect. So I, I think what it basically, unfortunately, what it basically did for me was make me not even trust, make me not trust even more. Um, and not just the technology but people because people decided to do that whether i know them or not they decided to do that more so i don't know them and so why would i feel trespassed you know but we put it on ourselves and so we, going back to your question i i do believe that the internet saved us from the pandemic and allows us the conveniences of going on with life. And that's our mentality. We, we, we going on with our life. We're moving forward, but I don't think that we would be in a lot of this predicaments that we are in if it wasn't for such free, um, access to ourselves um and, and to information um i kind of miss having a scheduled time to find out what's going on in the world at five and at ten mm -hmm. um now even that is hard to find uh, to to go to find out where the news sta the news stations that are going to give you correct information and not biased information um, we're seeing that in our elections now. I was like, good luck finding that. But. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you, you know, sad. I don't, I, I, I'm kind of a social media person. I, I, I love Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, I love Facebook. I'm, I appreciate and really, and I use Instagram, but, oh, the bad taste in my mouth that this whole pandemic, this these documentaries have been leaving, you know, uh, 
<laughs> so getting back onto your halal, do you have like a motto or a mission statement for a particular halal? Or did you guys do uh, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> I, I This is horrible because our mission statement, I need to, I should remember it, but it. You could just make one up right now. Halal hi yakang makalehua mission is to perpetuate the ancient culture, um, the ancient cultural art form of the Hawaiian people called hula uh, through dances, physically, intellectually, emotionally, and spiritually um, as a collective in uh, a traditional halau or place of practice, cultural practice. Um, that's kind of the, you know, the gist of it. But what we do is we have a cult. <laughs> you know what? Let's just break it down. We have a cult. Like if you really want to call it that, I want, I wanted a cult. When I graduated as a kumuhula, I wanted a cult. Um, and what does that mean? People don't like that word, but what does that mean? Well, it means having a place where the people that believe in you and your, your purpose follow that belief. A church is a cult. A religion is a cult. Um, uh, one of our very good kumuhula friends, well known, I won't say his name, just I didn't get the permissions, but he calls his halal a coven, mm. <laughs> you know? And, and yeah, we kind of joke around about it because we play to the, you know, the mentalities of other people who are like, ooh, cult, coven, I don't right, know. Right, because you could do some negative with it, but you yeah. guys aren't. You're doing something very positive with it. Yeah, and, and calling it what it what people really think it is. Um, it, hula is not a democracy. Halau is our halau is not a democracy. I'm me and Lono are the um, the bosses mm -hmm. in our halau. What we go, what we say goes. Um, if you don't like it, there's the door. Um, but you have that option. I'm not going to lock all the doors and stick you in here and tell you, you need to believe this. Mm -hmm. Um, and you have no other way out. Uh, no, this is what we're basing our, our teachings off of what we know and what we have acquired and learned, um, through our kumuhula, our experiences, our learnings, um, of our culture. And we express that through hula, the dance, the chant, the uh, ideologies, the philosophies of, of hula. Um, it's really simple, but s sometimes it gets very convoluted and misunderstood. And so I just tell people I have a cult. <laughs> 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 and then they're, they're, then, you know, if people are like, oh, good, I want to join your cult, then, oh, right on. <laughs> and then other people are like, no, then I'm like, good, stay away. <laughs> Keanu, thank you for coming on and um, sharing your cult with us. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, closing words or anything like that? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> mahalo, uh, other than mahalo nui, mahalo for having me. This is so much fun. Um, like I said, I, I never really just talked stories and talked about the things that I love. I love Hawaii. I love hula. Um, I love uh, I love being Hawaiian. So mahalo nui for letting me express that and asking great questions. All right. Thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Mahalo. Oh, thank yeah. you, Ani. Stay happy, Hawaii. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs>